Hey guys, welcome. In this video, I'm gonna show you three incredible assets that can take your game from looking like a prototype to looking polished in honestly less than five minutes. I'm gonna show you how to get set up and started with each of them and show you how to use the more advanced features as well. And by the way, it is Cyber Week, so everything you see in this video is 50% off right now. So with that being said, let's get started. Ready? Let's go. So getting started with the Sprite Shaders Ultimate Package is really easy, and it's got some options that surprised me in a good way because I've never seen them before. So the basics. You will get 66 shader effects right off the bat. You can create a new material, go down to the Sprite Shaders Ultimate and select whichever shader variant you want. And once you select one, even if you accidentally click the wrong one, you can change it up here at the top. And this is organized really well. So you get 22 different color shader effects. This is where you're gonna get your standard effects that you'd expect like tint, glow, brightness, contrast, saturation, and hue controls, different outline effects. But when you start digging into some of them, you'll see there's actually a lot more options than you would expect. For example, the outer outline. Here's your typical outline effects but there's also a distortion toggle to make the effect way more dynamic and interesting looking. Or you can use a texture and animate that, or you can do both. And you can also make it outline only. And you can stack all of these effects together as well. You're not just limited to using one, so you can make some really unique effects with it. And if you've been playing around with it and you don't like the changes you've made, there's this R button to reset the variable back to its default values. And what I really appreciate is this C sharp button, which is gonna pop out a really helpful window that gives you the property name. And it gives you a full code example for both sprites and UI. So if you wanna know how to change anything dynamically with code, it shows you how to do this with every single effect. There's 13 different effects that you can customize as well as two custom texture layers that you can also animate, which is really cool. There's nine different fade effects, some of which I've never seen before in any other asset, like the full distortion fade or the directional distortion. I think those are awesome. The rotation is in degrees, so if you wanna do it horizontally, set it to 90 or 270. And if you wanna do it vertically, set it to zero or 180. Then use the fade slider to fade your sprite in and out based on the direction you set. There are 11 transformation effects where you can pixelate, distort, wiggle, vibrate, etc. All sorts of cool stuff in there. I'm going to come back to these two at the end because they are awesome, but they have a little bit more setup needed. Then over here, you've got your other effects. I can see this checkerboard pattern being really cool for a screen transition effect. You can use the flame as either an interesting looking ghost effect in your characters, or you can just generate a shader based flame from scratch. Now, typically Gaussian blurs are quite expensive and you can see it samples the texture 16 times in order to get this effect. Now, if you want to animate this or fade this effect in at runtime, then there's not a whole lot you can do about that. However, if you're just, for example, wanting to add a nice blur to your sprites in the background, then you can come up here and bake your shader to a texture and save it. And you can stack it up to 20 times when you're doing this to get a really nice, smooth Gaussian blur. This will literally save a new copy of your sprite with the blur applied on top of it. And this is going to save you a lot of performance because the game doesn't have to calculate that blur every single frame. It's just one texture. All right, now back to these two. Both the wind and the squish are interactive. So if we enable this, you can see that we need one wind manager in our scene. And we need to add an interactive wind component to this object. And as soon as you do that, your grass is going to start interacting with colliders that touch it. And you can do the exact same thing with squish. Though, of course, with both of these effects, you don't have to make them interactive if you don't want. That's totally optional. So I'll kind of admit that I thought Tail Animator would have a fairly limited use case just based on the name and the videos that I'd seen on it. But after playing around with it to make this video, I'm surprised by how much it got my imagination going for all sorts of cool types of effects and animations and different things I could do for enemies for my own game. Now this works really nicely in both 2D and 3D, but since 2D devs might be just a little less familiar with working with bones, let me show you two ways that we can do this. And the first is just by creating bones in the skinning editor for your sprites. So I brought in a rope sprite here. We're gonna go into the sprite editor and open the skinning editor. First, we'll do auto geometry to give ourselves more vertices to work with. 
And now we'll add some bones and just work our way down. Now we can give this auto weights and click generate. Now, if we add a sprite skin component, the bones are already there, so we can just click create bones. And now it's created the actual separate game objects for each bone that we're going to need. Now we can add our tail animator to component. So we can just hit the refresh button on the tail chain and it correctly found our end bone. And for our start bone, let's start it at bone one. And right away, it's already animating and moving around. And for a tail, this would make a lot of sense, but for our rope, maybe not so much. So we can go to features and adjust the wave speed. But the biggest changes in how the behavior is going to look come from the tweak animation tab, where we can play around with the slitheriness, the curling amount, and springiness. Now it's also really easy to add collisions. We're gonna select it and I'm gonna go with 2D collisions. We can adjust the scale multiplier. And now you can select dynamic world colliders if you want it to react to everything in the world, at least if they're in the included shapes list. And just like that, it'll react to any collider in your game. If you want to optimize or you don't necessarily need it to react to everything, then you can just drag and drop the colliders that you do want it to react to in here. And it just works. One of my favorite things is that you can add an inverse kinematic target if you want it to behave like, say, a tentacle that's reaching out to grab something. I'll make it follow this floating creature here. You can let it stretch if you want. You can play around with the angle limits. And what's really, really cool about this asset is it reacts to changes to the transform component, which means not only could you script it to just move around and everything else on there will still work, but you can also combine your traditional bone animations with this component to get that animation that you worked really hard on, but also get it to react to physics. Now, I said I'd show you two ways that you can do this for 2D, although the next method would work well for 3D also because we're doing it with line renderers. So we can set our width and our material. And the demo scene has this tail demo line renderer script. That's gonna use the line renderer and automatically create bones from that. Just assign your tail animator here. And just like that, it's working with a line renderer as well. There's also this really cool segmented tail generator script that lets you cut off the tail at any segment. And that section you cut off is just gonna fly off and continue acting like a regular tail. Full disclosure on this though, it uses the on mouse down method, which is a part of the legacy input system. It's an easy fix though. You can just switch your project settings to both. If you're wanting your project to look less static and more like a living, breathing world, then you are really going to like the living particles asset. This is not just a particle system. It is a full interaction suite for your particle systems. So when you install the package, you want to select your appropriate Unity package based on your pipeline. I'm using URP with the forward renderer, not the 2D renderer because this asset needs 3D lighting. Now to get this asset looking its absolute best, the demo scene has post-processing. It's got some tone mapping, color adjustments, and bloom. Bloom especially is what's going to make this really pop for you. Okay, to actually get one of these up and running, it is actually extremely easy because every one of these particles is made into a prefab for you. So let's just drag one of those in. Notice that it has this living particle controller script. All it needs is a transform. So let's plug that in. And we hit play and it's already working. Now, obviously you can play around with your particle settings like normal. I'll add some noise. So that works along with our living particle effector or even just some constant velocity. So that's fine, but that's not where the magic of this asset comes from. The magic all comes from their shaders and they do have quite a few. So this is mainly what you're gonna to wanna to play around with to get your effect looking and feeling really good. If you need your particles to react to more than one object, you're gonna to want to swap out the living particle controller with a living particle array controller. And note that you'll need to swap the shader for its array version as well. If you enable the ramp, you can change the look of every particle system quite a bit, just with a different ramp texture. They've got a bunch included. But one of the coolest features in this asset came with their latest update, which added the ability to make particles react to audio. All you need is an audio source with a living particles audio source component. And on the living particles audio module, just fill in the transform and audio source with the living particles audio source component. 
Now, I will say this asset was mainly built for use with 3D projects. Several of the shaders use the depth buffer. The depth buffer does not work in 2D projects because nothing transparent is written to the depth buffer, and that includes sprites, so just keep that in mind. Don't forget, all three of the assets mentioned in this video are 50% off, but only for one week starting today. So the sale will end on December 10th for these assets. And I've got links for all of them in the description below. That is all I got. I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you next week. Bye.